Do you ever get that feeling that you might not know what your food is really made of? There's a way to find out. Give that fish stick a DNA test. That's what these two high schoolers did. That's Brenda Tan and Matthew Cost from the Trinity School in New York City. And as an extracurricular experiment under the supervision of Mark Stokel, I'm an adjunct uh, faculty at Rockefeller University. They collected 217 items from their homes, the grocery store, fast food joints, and used a technique called DNA barcoding to find out what species the products were made from. We had 66 total food samples identified, uh, and out of those, 11 were mislabeled. For example, a product labeled sheep's milk cheese came back with just cow DNA. There was caviar, which people for some reason have been very intrigued by. It was supposed to be sturgeon caviar, but it was actually from a Mississippi paddlefish, and that caviar is much cheaper. And then there were things that turned up shockingly clean. Like New York hot dogs. We only got beef DNA yeah, from dirty did. water hot dogs, so that's encouraging. Just be Maybe even more surprising is that there's DNA in hot dogs at all. Any biological cell is going to break down through chemical processes or heat, um, but we found DNA to be very, very resilient. DNA barcoding relies on sequencing DNA from one gene, in this case from the mitochondria. It's relatively short, and that short sequence is able to um, discern one species from another species. Dr. Stokel says that just why the short sequence gives a reliable species ID isn't well understood. Uh, if you know that answer, you can get a Nobel Prize. It's, a, it's an observation, it's clearly true, uh, exactly why it's true, there's a lot of discussion in science. The Museum of Natural History in New York offered to do the actual sequencing, sending the students back the barcodes. Which is a sequence of the letters A, T, G, and C, just jumbled up. And then they entered that sequence into an online database. They're basically like Google for DNA. So you just copy and paste it in and just hit enter and just see what's there. Almost all of their samples had matches in the database, with a notable exception. Take it away. <laughs> okay. We tested a cockroach that we found dead in an Upper West Side apartment, which actually looked like an American cockroach. It came back as 4% distinct from um, all of the other cockroaches in the database. Meaning it may be a new species. Because species differ at most by 1 or 2%, so yeah. So like most scientists, Matt and Brenda seemed a little taken aback by the media frenzy their discovery generated. I yeah. think Matt and I were very <laughs> surprised. Some of my friends were like, hey man, do you want to hang out? I'm like, no, I have seven interviews to do today. <laughs> They're like, oh. I see how it is. <laughs> Why it's do you intense. think people are so interested? I think the fact that, um, that two high school students who aren't scientists could do this project is the most interesting part. And, and there was a possibility of discovering a new cockroach. I like lab coats. You like lab coats. Let's be silent.